at the Coliseum. My tour is at 12.20 for the third ring in the underground. It'll be fantastic. So here it is in all its glory. See the lines are massive. <laughs> Cannot wait to get in there. Crazy, but the line without a reservation seemed shorter than the line with a reservation. Here are old columns that look like they've been taken apart and cut and just put here. So, came up a little higher now, and you can see inside. You can see there's the floor of how it would have looked like. We're going to do the underground tour soon to actually get in there. Amir! Amir So you can see the, the foundation of it is thin brick with uh, mortar or concrete, I suppose. And then up there, there's larger blocks of what looks like sandstone or limestone. But it's hard to tell. You almost get the impression of what it would have been like. So quickly, the gladiators would come in through there and after they would die or dead bodies, they would be escorted through there. The emperor would likely sit there. This is just a skeleton because it's all been deconstructed for modern buildings and even at the time. And our guide said there's no evidence that any Christians were killed here except for possibly one, even though there's a big cross over there. Okay, so we are in 
the underground now, we have to mention that we are exactly there. So th there will be a lot of holes also around uh, our tool. In this holes, there were wooden poles, okay? And these wooden poles were um, connected to a lid. A lid can contain, for example, a cage with a lion, right? These wooden poles were turned by the slaves. It requires eight slaves for every pole. And with a system of counterweights, the cage with the lion was slowly raised. You see here, in fact, it's an empty space. When the cage arrived to the level of the pavement of the arena, there were trap doors. Yeah. And uh, this kind of stone, the, the Colosseum was made especially in this kind of stone, it's called a Palatino. A lot of monuments of Rome are made in this stone, so you, you will see for sure Fontana di Trevi or Capitolio are made in this stone. Here it's raw, it's not finished because here there was a place for the powers. It's a place where there were a lot of people who comes and goes. So it was very resistant because these bricks are fixed into the sand. So it's adapted to place like this or for the market. So from this tunnel, the gladiators would come from their barracks and go into the Colosseum to fight. All of these holes were for lifts to prop up animals up to the top level and the gladiators themselves. And then these archways are supported by gravity. They're actually not connected with anything in between. They would build it from the side with wood and then stick the middle piece in. Slaves have just some torches and little oil lamps for every little lights. Try to imagine, 60, uh, eight slaves for every lift, 60 lifts, here was full of slaves. Imagine the cages with wild animals, the smells, the brutes of gladiators, so it was not a good place for working for sure. <laughs> so if you had 60 lifts operated by slaves and all this was pitch black with just torches and oil lamps, that's probably what the black stains are up there. Maybe it's soot. I can imagine that the pavements of the arena are very long until there. All this structure here were not visible. So also here there were other rooms, like the rooms we see with the leads. There were rooms for the scenery sets and something like this. As you can see, um, the underground were restored a lot of times during the centuries. Also because here there were a lot of wooden structures, so the fire happened often by torches, by lamps. So there were a lot of fires here. So also the Elevator system changed a lot of times during the century, and um, you know there are um, there are also some archaeologists. I told to you that the underground were made just after the inauguration of the Colosseum. So during the inaugural games, here it was an empty space. All these under here, there were no structures. Toilets was full of fountains. It's not like today. And um, one element um, who support this kind of hypothesis was that uh, here, when there was this enormous house of Nero before the construction of the Colosseum, here, exactly here, where there is the arena now, there was an artificial lake that Nero wanted for embellishment his house. So the Roman engineers who come to build the Colosseum had already the dig. So our guy just told us that it's possible, it's a hypothesis that this area was actually controlled, flooded and that they had aquatic games here in boat or some kind of aquatic games but it's all uh, hypothesis <laughs> these are the counterweights and they found it also the original ones now they are into the exposition and here there is the cage you see so oh. the cage was raised and there were trap doors you see yeah on the pavement of the arena so Mm. It's functional, it works. Where did it all go? It all drained onto the place? 
face. You know, the archaeologists understood that here, before this inscription that we carry today, there was an earlier inscription. Because all these holes in origin contained the clamps for metallic letters that are not preserved. And so, from the distribution of the holes, I know we are a little crazy, they try to reconstruct the letters and the original inscription of this block. And um, it was probably one of the inaugural inscriptions of the Colosseum. And this is the hypothetical reconstruction. So, this early inscription speaks about the Emperor of Titus, who was the emperor who inaugurated the Colosseum in the after Christ, who built it an amphitheater novel, because the Colosseum was new for the technique and engineer capacity. Ex Manubis, what were the Manubis? They were the monies that Roman made after a war of conquest. And this war of conquest was for sure the sack of Jerusalem, happened in the 70th after Christ, so 10 years before the construction of the Colosseum. So here we are at Constantine's Gate, the largest gate in all of Rome. So here we are at the gate, or the archers say, and they said, guide, that if you look on the inside, you'll see a relief of them carrying away artifacts from Jerusalem. There it is, when they sacked it. So right there, they've got the menorah and other things from when they sacked the temple. So this was the temple of Romulus that was converted into a church, taken from the pagans and made Christian.
So these rooms here, it, the little plaque said it's a mystery what they are. They could be to house slaves or storage rooms, even possibly some kind of a hotel. But they're not quite sure. So I'm not sure if I just overheard this correctly, but one of these buildings, and it might be this one, is modeled after the Temple of Jerusalem that was destroyed by the Romans. I don't know if that's true, but it would be interesting if that was the case. on it like uh, pictographs almost it must tell a story from the bottom up, 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 up. because they appear to be different 